I'm not sure what this is coming from. I'm thinking I'm having some, I heard some horrible noises, but it, oh, it's coming from my brakes. So I was driving and I heard some horrible noises, which I thought was the motor. Uh, but turns out that smoke is coming from the rear drum. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that wheel. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire. My thought is the rear wheel bearing was leaking, letting some fluid onto the brakes and it caught fire while stopping and destroyed the brake. So let's go ahead and remove it. Remove the wheel at least. wheel bearing is definitely leaking. That brake is just spewing smoke. Oh, fuck, that's hot. Oh, yeah. If you look in here, in here, looks like the bearing for the rear wheel cylinder completely disintegrated in there, caught fire. Well, at least we know it's not the motor, so. Um, you can tell by the back of the wheel, rear wheel seal and bearing were leaking, getting uh, differential oil all over them. The wheel well and the rear wheel so we'll have to get that fixed all right guys so we're back a couple days later to repair the damage to the axle um, from what I gather what happened was the axle seal came off the bearing went dry disintegrated damaged the brakes and probably damaged the axle so we have all this to get cleaned up and fixed today you are gonna need some specialty tools which I know a lot of people don't have but I happen to have them it's gonna make my job a lot easier. So some of the specialty tools you're gonna to need is a bearing, uh, rear axle bearing puller set, which I happen to have because I've done this before. And then also a, a slide hammer, that's pretty important, as well as a bearing and race driver kit. I also have some brake tools, brake drum tools, as well as a hammer and a pry bar some gloves I have an impact with a half inch socket I have eight millimeter socket and wrench another half inch wrench and I have a magnet to see if we can pull out any of the metal bits um, in regards to replacement parts um, oh also you're gonna need something to drain the fluid from your differential in which I have there I got a new axle here because anytime there's any sort of damage to the riding surface of the bearing and axle seal um, any pittings, marring, or anything like that, you're gonna have essentially the same issue happen all over again. So I got a brand new axle. I got a new seal for the rear differential, a new bearing, I actually got a repair bearing. I got a uh, differential shaft lock bolt. You have to replace this every time you take it out. It's a, it's a one-time use bolt. And then of course our brake shoes for the rear brakes. I'm going to replace them both on both sides. That way they're even. Some brake clean and some synthetic gear lube. So first thing we're going to go ahead and just drain the fluid from the axle. Now, you can see how much fluid is coming out here. Should be way more. <laughs> uh, a lot of it looks like it drained out of that side. 
but it should be way more fluid than this. That was, there was nothing in there. That's not good. Well, hopefully our um, differential is okay. Gosh, there should have been way more fluid in there. there was, it was riding on nothing. Look like it's moving much, so that's a good sign. These Ford 8.8s are, you know, a lot of people like to upgrade to the 9 inch, but these 8.8s are, these 8.8 .8 differentials are, are plenty strong. I mean, I'm not gonna put a thousand horsepower through something like this, but I don't have a thousand horsepower car, just this 200 horsepower Bronco. <laughs> so this is our gasket. The gasket's in really good shape, so I'm just go ahead and take that off. I'm surprised that I didn't have more issues if it was draining fluid for an extended period of time. Why I'm, I'm replacing the brakes is because they're doused in gear oil, which probably doesn't help stopping capabilities. But also you can see how the shoe has been damaged here. That's not gonna last long like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace it. Okay, so in order to get this axle out of here, we have to get the pinion shaft out. So I gotta turn this differential carrier until you see this bolt here. That bolt needs to come out. It's an eight millimeter, and you gotta be careful with these because they can break pretty easily. Slips right out. So this you do not want to let get dirty. Well, looks like I forgot a few things. We might have to pick this up another day, but I forgot that this rear differential that in this a they didn't always come with limited slip differential, but mine happens to have one. And the fluid that I got, let's see. It has limited slip friction modifier included. Generally you're supposed to add it, but this looks like it's included. But I, if you're in there, you might as well go ahead and change the limited slip discs. So I'm gonna get some of those and then continue with this project another day. Okay, after some thought and research about the limited slip uh, clutch packs, I think we're gonna go ahead and just keep the ones that are in there. Reason being is they don't sell them locally at most auto parts stores and I went to the Ford dealership and they don't carry them they'd have to order them it would take about a week and they're expensive I could buy them pretty cheap on Jags or something like that but I don't feel like waiting so we're gonna go ahead and just go put this thing back together now but first thing we need to do right now is go ahead and remove the axle so in order to do that we have to take this axle and push it in as far as we can it seems to be that since this axle is so, the bearing is so destroyed, it's kind of hard to push in as far as we need to go. So we're supposed to be able to push that axle in far enough to retain the C-clip that's holding the axle in. However, I can't seem to push it far enough because of the debris that's hold, that got destroyed on the outside of the axle. This way, this is what you're trying to get out of there. Okay, set that aside in a safe location. Now we should be able to remove the axle. Okay, now we're gonna see the carnage that this thing left. Oh my God. You can see all the damage. Just the bearings destroyed. There's nothing left in there. Completely came apart. Try to retrieve as much of the debris as possible with this magnet. I, so I tried to use the magnet and retrieve as much of the debris as possible. I think I got 
99.9% of it. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we're going to be using another repair bearing, because the repair bearing seals it off from the rest of the axle tube. It should fill with the gear oil, but hopefully not with any sort of debris. And there's a seal on the other side of the axle tube. Now if you look on the axle itself, the axles are supposed to be smooth, and you can see how destroyed this is. If it's any damage like that, it's just not going to seal very well. And we're going to run into the same problem. Exactly why I got a new axle. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and use the slide hammer and tool. The way this works is you find the diameter of your tube, which I believe this one is. And you slide this in there and open it up. And you take your slide hammer and you want to get full thread it as much as you can and then use it to knock this bearing sleeve out. Easy as that. So now we need to get the studs out of the old axle to install in the new one. And the trick to that is a big hammer. So I like to take one of these old sockets you know, I don't use this one. You make it kind of level with the top, and you usually be able to get one of these out with the, with the, with the hammer. have all your studs and we have to install this in the new one. I'll show you how we do that. So while we have the axle out we can go ahead and remove the brakes. I'm not going to go over in detail how this is done because there's a million videos of it online. Um, I have tools for it which is going to make it easier on me. Um, if you don't have tools you can use uh, pliers and screwdrivers and stuff but just go out and buy a set of these. It costs like I don't know 10-15 bucks and yet it makes it saves you so much time. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and remove all the springs. And this tool is used to pull that off. Pull them off. Put it in here. Twist. Here's one. Here's the other. Then you can go ahead and remove these. Save these pins. This one. And this comes on. It really takes two seconds. So this repair bearing goes seal side in like this. So first, I just want to take it easy and make sure it goes in straight. Doesn't need a whole lot initially. Then you hear it. It makes a different noise when it when it's all the way seated. There it is. New seal, new bearing. Now we can install our axle. You should be able to see the, the big difference of this really destroyed surface to this new axle with its nice clean bearing surface. All right, next we're just gonna slide our new axle in most of the way. Okay, and before you set it all the way in, uh, and take your new studs and slide them in because you won't be able to get back there after you slide it all the way in. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> and 
I'll show you how to set those in. We're going to take our axle and slide it all the way. And now we can put the C-clip back in, uh, in the differential carrier. We can reinstall our C-clip. Then you push the axle forward to set it in. I think that you're supposed to torque this to a certain torque setting. I'm just going to snug it. Because you don't want that thing to break. It's a nightmare to get out. Ask me how I know. Alright, got a washer. So now we can set these on. Okay, everything should be back to normal on this side, which means we can go ahead and put our drum back on. And if there was any damage to this, I would probably re replace the drum, because they're relatively inexpensive. However, I gave it a pretty good inspection, and it seems just fine. Okay, so, uh... That side's all sorted out. We're gonna go ahead and replace the brakes, the brake shoes on the driver's side, um, just because you always wanna replace your brakes in pairs. You want them both, both sides to be the same. And it should be good to go back on the road. Um, of course, we have to refill the diff. So we're gonna do that next. Our new gasket on. Now, I find that when using something like gasket sealer or RTV, it just doesn't work as well as a good paper gasket. As long as your surfaces are clean, you shouldn't need RTV or anything like that. Um, I've done it in the, before in the past just to get extra peace of mind. However, it's always come back to bite me and I have to go back and redo it. This would probably be a lot easier if I had it supported by the frame and had this all the way droop, but it only takes a few extra seconds. So, no big deal. We've all been there where you have to do one turn at a time, but you know, That's our moment to reflect. Because during this period of ref reflection, I have thought about what I thought was a rod knock with the Bronco. Turns out it was most likely because you know the truck's been running fine. I changed the oil, still no problems. And but every time I would start the truck, no noise, but then when I would get going, I would hear some sort of rumbling as I went along. And now, I'm pretty sure, probably my completely dry differential and bearings. So hopefully this will rectify that. God, I've driven this so many miles over the past few months I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. I thought I smelled diff foil. I was like, ah, old truck, it's just smelly. How wrong I was. And here I am, fixing it again. But that's the great thing about old trucks is that you learn a lot. Just old cars in general, project cars. So right here is the fill hole for the diff. Now these differentials take about two and a half quarts. Now all that's left is the driver's side brakes. Go ahead and knock that out real quick and we'll be back on the road. All right, so after a lot of struggle, I got the rear driver's side drum brakes done. It took a minute, but now I, I should be able to put the wheels back on and then take her for a test drive.
Bronco's back on the road, new axle. Looks really good and drives better than ever. Stops really hard actually, um, probably because they're brand new brakes, but you know, something like this, it takes some time, but just don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and it's relatively simple as long as you can put everything back together the way it came apart. So um, it's all just nuts and bolts and uh, now we got an, a truck that's back on the road, which would have otherwise been out of commission um, for a long time. So I only spent about $150 in replacement parts. So that's it. Thanks again for watching. You guys can find me at my website at autoexistence.com as well as Facebook and Instagram at autoexistence. See you in the next one. Thanks.